everyone and welcome back to Nerd Center and today we're going to be talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. This will be our first time talking about it with each other. Um, we've had an embargo in the in our chats to not talk about it until we'd all seen it. And now that everyone in our group's seen it, we're going to talk about it. This will be the first time hearing each other's reactions and thoughts to the movie. So without further ado, let's get right in. Oh, and just so you know, in case you haven't, spoilers. We're going to spoil the crap out of it. So nothing yep. is going to left unspoiled. So spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. And with that, spoiler. let's go ahead and get into it. Greg, you want to start us off? No. Okay, Isaiah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Spider-Man, Jesse, why don't you start? <laughs> well, I liked Spider-Man, No Way Home. Okay, so yeah, you liked the movie, and the two of us didn't like the movie, right? So maybe yeah. to start us off on the right foot, you're going to tell us what you liked about the movie. I liked them bringing in the old characters, not... I know it was nostalgia bait, and that was the entirety of it, and I, I went for it, and I liked it. The parts I didn't like or care about as much were the parts in the beginning with the MCU characters, like the stuff connected to the MCU that I didn't care about. Like, you know, I didn't like the stuff of Doctor Strange and stuff. I didn't really care about it, but once they brought in the old characters, that's what got more interesting for me. And the one thing I was concerned about with this movie was that they were going to kind of mess up or try to ruin the legacy of these other characters even a character like andrew garfield who has movies that people generally don't like but i liked andrew garfield as spider-man so like i didn't have a hell like, yeah you know, so uh, you liked him or you didn't like him i liked andrew garfield as spider-man regardless of the movies but like i feel like he was fine spider-man um, and i didn't hate the movies as much hell as everyone else did yeah. But so I liked seeing yeah. them both come back in, and I thought that Andrew had a good movie. Like he did pretty good in this movie. Like this was the one I like, we're already jumping straight into. But like the scene, like I really liked the scene where he saves fake MJ, and like it's like his redemption from Gwen. Like I really liked that, and you could just see like the emotion, like he finally caught her, and like I thought that was a really cool scene. Like I, I think even was, I think I'm even sorry, you said but... that that you talked about you heard that yeah. was gonna happen and and I'm like well that'd be cool and then they did it so I was pretty cool about that and yeah so when because I too thought that was what was going to happen from the trailer but then I was like yeah. well actually that would be kind of stupid if that would happen and they actually did it in the movie and it was actually worse than I thought it was going to be. Because that entire scene was actually stupid, if you actually just think about it. Because how long is she going to fall for? It's like, oh, I'm falling. And then Tom Holland goes to save her. And that takes up some time. And then the Green Goblin snatches her and she looks away. No. And then, oh, Gar Andrew Garfield has to jump in to save her. It's like, how long is she going to be falling for? Because that scene is just like very stupid with how mani ma manipulative it is, it is because it is not Andrew Garfield's redemption. He already had a redemption at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where he became a, uh, when he listened to Gwen's speech and he went out to help all those people. Why do people call this moment a, a redemption for the character when we already had a movie where he redeemed himself? And if you guys, and then what? Am I supposed to believe that he's never caught a love interest before or like a girlfriend of another person or a wife or a woman? And that every time he saves a falling woman, he just bursts into tears. That's what I'm supposed to believe. It's like, if you... I like, think it's more in the line of, since he said, ever since, like, there was an incident and he's only been focusing on Spider-Man, he the Toby, um, um, that he hasn't had... um. A love interest and since this was someone not like a random civilian this was someone a love interest for another version of himself i think that's why yeah i don't uh, i don't think was it was like saying that like he was redeeming his character it was just like he he lost her he missed it and he had a chance to just like catch somebody like Okay, so he like, doesn't catch anybody in the movie? He I'm not say saying that. I'm just saying, like, it's an important scene. There's kind of, like... No, his... it just feels important it's because like... that's how it's played up to be. That's your opinion. I just think that no, that... No, no, I mean, I, it's literally I just... don't think it's important. I think it's a, I think it's a good little moment, though. Yeah. Of him it's saving just a moment another because... version of himself, love interest. That's my problem with this movie. It's just full of moments that are just make you 
gonna make you go oh i know that thing oh i recognize that thing and this movie and this scene is the exact same thing and it's just there because the only thing they think i guess they think that the audience knows about this peter parker is that he lost gwen that's that seems like that's all they know about this version of the character so so that's all they have him do and he saves gwen and we're supposed to go oh wow he finally gets to save a Gwen or a love interest. Wow, that is so uh, heartwarming, and it's like the exact same thing here. It's just a moment that I do think that there are like, some things make... like that you're talking about where there's those moments where like they just throw it in to because, but I don't feel like that's all of like those. I think there's some new stuff in there, and like I like... really, well, I mean, like I enjoyed like the kind of the spiders like talking, like interacting and bouncing off each other and stuff. Most of their they... stuff together is just talking about how it's them recapping the movies that they were in. Most of the Somewhat. stuff. Somewhat. Like the, Not the entirely. The, the stuff with the web shooters, I like that part. I thought it was like very funny. And I like that interaction because it was original and everything. But for the rest, they were just kind of recapping the movies that they were in. And that's like all their... Oh, and obviously they couldn't decide which Spider-Man was which. So... They had to name Tom Holland Spider-Man number one, Tobey Maguire t Spider-Man number two, and Andrew Garfield for whatever reason he was labeled Spider-Man number three. Uh, so, well, they're doing that because it's one, it's Tom Holland's movie. Sp most people consider Tobey the the goat main Spider-Man, and then Andrew's Garfield's Spider-Man movies are usually looked down upon and joked about so they're kind of just like oh yeah figures he'd be three kind of makes a comment about that i feel like he's pretty self-aware of what people think about the movie they kind of play on that in the movie about how people don't like <laughs> the amazing maybe the spider-man movies and they kind of talk they touch on that and he's a kind of aware of that well the amazing spider-man number one was much better than anything we've seen dmc but do. people still didn't like it no people didn't because like it either wasn't of toby them. Yeah, because it wasn't Toby. Yeah, but it was... I think people liked it. I think the one... No, that... the, no the general consensus on Andrew... Oh, wait. Am I getting picked up? Both of, both of his movies sucked as general consensus from everyone I've talked to. Well, then if... I uh, don't agree with. If Andrew Garfield is bad for just not being Toby, then... Well, I guess I see what the problem is, but then they would have an even bigger problem with Tom Holland, but I guess not because because of reasons. No, because he's in the universe and gotta love him. Right. I still don't care about Tom Holland Spider Man. Like, <laughs> I no. did say this one little nod. I did like the suit looked pretty comic accurate at the end. It looked kind of computer animated, two ish for a real movie, but I thought it was cool. The Costume, design like, was awesome. The design was awesome, but I thought it looked like computer animated. Like, it didn't look real at all. That I was think my out only... of all the Spider-Man costumes, I think this one was my favorite. I think it was like pulled up straight from the comic books. Yeah, and it looked really cool. But yeah, the design was awesome. But other than that, like I think that if an entire movie was like that, maybe you could have, maybe because then you you still have to account for like the previous movies. Maybe I would have enjoyed it. But uh. This entire movie was just, as you guys can see, I didn't like the movie. I thought it wasn't only nostalgia bait, and but the entire execution of how everything was portrayed was just pointing to stuff that just looks familiar to you, and that's it. It's like, but if you think about these things, it's like, oh, why did he run into Doctor Octopus in that specific moment in that time? It was there was no There's actual. There's a lot of plot there. holes in this movie. Yeah, yeah. there was a lot of and things that you just yeah. And I think it would be even interesting to like, talk about how a lot of them were kind of like, like you said, like there were a lot of them. And well, I could actually see why Green Goblin found Peter Parker because there was a helicopter coming after him. And by that time, he was fighting Dr. Octopus. So I could see how the Green Goblin got to him, but not Dr. Octopus. That was odd. And then like Electro showing up out of nowhere where Sandman just so happened to be. <laughs> it's like what well you know they're obviously in other places because i think they're they transported to where they were in the world and all those characters were in new york because if you think about venom he was at the beach or wherever and that's kind of where he transported to 
So I guess they kind of transported to wherever they were. I'm but, assuming something like but that. Yeah, that was... makes sense for um, Doc Ock because he's like, where's my machine? So he just teleported there. He's like, wait, wait, where, where, what the fuck? So I had it just a second ago. <laughs> so it just so happened that Spider-Man ap- appeared at that moment in, in that time, in that exact location where his hideout no, was. No, I didn't say I, it wasn't convenient. Doc found him. It's convenient. Doc, I'm just... Yeah. yeah, there's no way Doc would have found him. He's in the highway somewhere. What the fuck? And then Electro, he was in, in like, in, in, not in the middle of New York, but he was like in New York. Whereas in this movie, it's like in the outskirts of this mm-hmm. area where there's like a military base where Salmon also is. So that's kind of convenient. Okay. Oh, oh, they changed Electro from Electro to Jamie Fox. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like how he sort of like made the snide remark to make fun of Peter for having Legos. When he was like this big nerd yeah. in The Amazing Spider Man 2, I was like, what are you? You had a whole fucking shrine going and shit. Shut up. He was exactly, he was in the in the original The Amazing Spider Man 2, he was annoying. But in this movie, he was also annoying because he was just Jamie Foxx. Mm, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, he was just, he was, he was just motivation. Jamie Foxx. Same man. Yeah, same man. Just I'm gonna help the people who want to destroy the box. Yeah, good job, good job, Flint. So, um, what did you guys think about the Daredevil cameo? It was there. You don't have any yeah, negative I was, I was, thoughts I was about glad it. Glad that it was there. No, it was. It was. Yeah, I, I was glad that they showed his power too. Like you know, he wasn't just the lawyer. Like they actually showed him like catching the brick and stuff, and kind of implying he says, he's actually I'm a good lawyer. Yeah, so he's actually implying he is actually Daredevil and not just happens to be Matt Murdock, you know, kind of thing. I would have loved to have seen him in a court rather than just their apartment, but I, 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 I can see why. Mm-hmm. It's just quick. This one to show him quick. I appreciate that they showed him, but yeah. So, I mean, I, I that knew was that pretty... was coming too, but I I was still kind of happy to see that. So I don't care, like if they if it was it was all nostalgia bait. I won't argue that, but I liked it, and it wasn't done as bad as I thought it was. So, yeah, that's fair enough. Like you know, I'm not I'm not oblivious to what it is, but I mean, like you guys, I liked it, so I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable movie to me. Uh, granted, it is kind of fresh, and sometimes after I sit on a movie for a while, I don't feel as highly about it, but I feel like it's still easily, in my opinion, the best movie that came out this year. Or, shoot, I'm not supposed to say that. Go watch our review later on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you can say that. You can say that. Um, can what did you think favorite. about the um, the Goblin and fight um, at the end? You like I... I liked, I did like that he was, I did like in the apartment that you could see how brutal the goblin is and how you kind of see his powers and you get to beat the crap out of Tom Holland, Spider-Man. So like to show that he was powerful, Mm. I liked that because I feel like maybe if it was just because of when they filmed it, but they didn't show that power as much in the first Spider-Man. And like I said, it could be just because of how they made the movies back then and maybe they couldn't show it the same way, but I thought that was a cool thing. And at the end, I thought it was a, a neat fight. I did hate that they got rid of the costume and put the hood and everything. I thought that was stupid because no masks in the MCU. Got to see the faces and stuff. It's stupid, but I thought it was a yeah. cool fight. And then Toby, like, stop instead of Toby letting him get stabbed with the glider, he stopped him. He saved him from getting stabbed by the glider. <laughs> you know? Yeah. When Toby got stabbed, oh, I thought Tom stabbed him. <laughs> I didn't expect goblin to get back up so i was like i thought i don't know somehow he just stabbed him like get the fuck out of my way <laughs> all i was thinking at that point is like people are gonna be ticked off if he get did they kill toby that's all i was thinking in that oh, scene yeah, I, was like, I was like i was like oh my gosh are they serious like that's when i thought all they were doing good and then i'm like okay they, they're gonna screw it all up they're gonna kill toby and then that's gonna be their stupid move they're gonna shoot themselves in the foot right there and he survived, I guess, he somehow, but I feel like he was dead. Like, he was going to die. He got stabbed right in the middle of the gut. Oh, yeah. Ugh. 
So like that part, I was like, they were getting ready to shoot themselves in the foot if they killed Toby. Like that would have been their their downfall right there. People would have hated that. They definitely wanted a reaction out of you when they stabbed him, but it didn't really go anywhere. Nor did it really go anywhere with uh, when Tom Holland was going gonna go kill Green Goblin. They do the stare down, but other than that, they kind of like gloss over the fact that Spider Man was going to be that he was going to kill a person they kind of gloss over that part by the end like yeah we're gonna we're gonna laugh it off and move it on and say goodbye and like what was exactly green goblin's plan at the end of the movie it's like i'm gonna let the lizard electro and salmon fight these guys uh and then i'm gonna come at the end when they finally defeat you it's like what was the plan here i don't know like i said there is plot holes in this movie And also, mm. so I guess with my general thoughts, like obviously other than like the fact that they used a lot of the nostalgia to kind of grab you in, I had a lot of problems with how they executed the themes of responsibility and how they were very tacked on because they wanted to be more in line with kind of like the more traditional Spider-Man. But, you know, it felt very fake because the plot felt very rushed and tinkered with including all the Doctor Strange bits. You know, in the trailers, there was the exchange of whether he was going to cast that spell. It was very different of how it was in the trailer. Um, so you could tell they were definitely doing a lot of things last minute. Also, you could hear a lot of reports and sources saying that they did. Uh, the VFX team was working on this movie 24... Uh, 24 well, not 24-7, but they were working seven days a week to finish this movie from like... November to like obviously December. So a lot of these things they were kind of sort of doing last minute and you could tell a lot of the VFX like when Andrew Garfield and Tom Ho and to uh, Toby come in you could see like the portals look very fake in the background like a green screen and the designs of those characters also looked in comparison to like their movies they looked very very weird so obviously it was very um very put together last minute but i will you know, say like, based on your uh thing about doctor strange in the trailers i was happy that they changed it because we mentioned in our yeah. in our review or talked about the trailer how back in in uh, infinity war he was ready to sacrifice like tony and spider-man to stop thanos from getting the stones and doing things like that and then here he in the trailers from all accounts he was just gonna like oh whatever we'll just erase the minds of everybody in the planet i mean he still did try to do that but he was they didn't hand they yeah. didn't act the way he did he was more it it played out better than they the trailers made it seem although i, I did disagree they... with you because then he's he's the one that comes up with the idea He's the one that goes ahead with the idea, and the only reason he stops is because eventually it just gets too convoluted, so he still goes with the idea. And it's actually even even worse, because at least in the trailers, you have Wong telling him not to do it, whereas in the here, Wong is telling him, uh, you know what, just keep me out of it. So in here, they actually make Doctor Strange look like the villain, and they make Wong look like a moron as well. Well, that's so you, the other part have... that I really didn't like, was that they the Sorcerer gave Supreme. Sorcerer Supreme... That just kind of off screen yeah. got handed it to Wong because Doctor Strange is gone. Sick. Which I get to a certain extent. If someone was dead, you pass it to somebody else for five years. But you know that you know the whole the whole five year thing just messed up a lot of stuff. But I thought the I entire didn't like that. movie, the entire movie in Doctor um, Strange. What is I think um, it's safe to say I have looked down. The eye of Hagamoto. Yeah, what what does he got that for? What what's the point? This is not a case. Cool. You know, well, you don't keep your iPhone case with you around. <laughs> it's like having the iPhone case without the iPhone. Well, I guess in the comics, it's not just a house for the Infinity Stone, but I guess in the movies, it was because that's where all its power came from. I suppose. Yeah. But I, it, in the comics, it's its own. It's its own artifact. Like it's its own thing. So I don't know. They never yeah. talked about that in the in the movies. And also, like Doctor Strange, 
he was constantly getting embarrassed as a, as a character, just written like a total fool because he's he gets beat up by Spider Man. He gets embarrassed by him in that in his own mere dimension where he's basically God. He gets defeated by Spider Man in that, and then you also have the moment where he just kind of lets the kids do the work for him. Scooby do this crap. Okay. It's like he's not acting like Doctor Strange. And then he goes on, goes on with the spell. And and then and then by the end of the movie, he's being responsible again by saying, we got to do this now. It's like they go back and forth with him. They use him as a plot device, a disposable plot device. And obviously that is to the negative of the character. Well, being as... And also- yeah, being as Doctor Strange is one of the last like main characters. He's a straight white guy. They're probably gonna try to phase him out. My guess with his movie. Uh, That's probably probably. He's guess. one of my favorites. <laughs> and did you guys hear what he said? The actor St- of Stephen Strange, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, said that uh, he doesn't know if he even has a story arc in the next Doctor Strange movie because. The movie has been tempered with so much and there's so many characters in the movie that he in an interview he said that he doesn't even know if he has a story arc anymore. Well he's fighting himself, which I assume that we see in the post credit trailer that eventually released that he's fighting the Doctor Strange from What If Strange Supreme. Yeah, the Strange from What If series, I believe is what it is. So I was the um what if episode after um seeing that and um if it is that version it has he had he has to be somewhere in the mid middle of the episode because or somewhat like because at by the end of that episode he does redeem himself well he actually like he in, i don't know if you guys episode. watched the end of the series but He's in the end with the watcher helping the watcher. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So it has to be in the middle of his arc rather than just at the end because he's just like a decent bloke at the end. But it could be just out of continuity and they just do it anyway because they didn't have rules for the multiverse <laughs> until after they or did all these movies. Different, so. Or it's just a different evil Doctor Strange. Mm. It is possible. Oh, that's kind of a disappointment if it's they have other doc plenty of villains they could use nightmare and they could have done Dormammu better different things Baron Mordo is not even been a main villain yet but, but back it, to uh, Spider-Man Batman No Way Home uh, I guess we should because I earlier said how like the responsibility thing felt tacked on and I never got into detail about that so what I'm so what I meant about that was how Aunt May was they were trying to make her the Uncle Ben. But when you actually, like, again, think about how the character was, it's like she was trying to guilt trip Peter in a way to let these, to help these guys. But it was very irresponsible for Peter to help these convicts to get them out of prison to bully the guy who is going to help you, close him off. You don't you have no idea if you're even going to if he's going to be safe in that mirror dimension for all you know, you could have left him there for his death. You go away with him, you beat him up. Apparently that is supposed to be heroic. You take these evil guys and you take them out of their cages thinking nothing is going to go wrong. And we're told that that is the most responsible thing he could have done. That is, that is like, and that to me was very fake. It didn't feel like it was actually about like responsibility and you could have put some other word in there like accountability you could have used words like monkey wrench and you could have said with great monkey wrenches comes bananas that could have made as much sense in the movie itself great nut monkeys well, i didn't yeah. like also how they just kind of swept uncle ben's stuff to the side and you know they never they've hinted at parts that there might be an uncle ben but i guess this confirms there's never been an uncle ben <laughs> Or whatever, and they gave it all that to Aunt May, and I didn't really like how that was handled exactly. So, I guess you're coming from, yeah. And I hear a lot of people say how they finally gave us the real Peter, but no, they didn't. They 
No, he's still not. Their way. He's still not comic book Peter. Yeah, it's just. I love how they tried to make him relatable when he was getting college ex applications, while while he's sitting in a rich uh, condominium next to Stark yeah. Technology doing tasks. I was like, this you, this is fucked. You, you and fucked he's it. like, and he's like, I'm the most famous person, but I'm still broke, and I'm sitting there. And number I, one, do you think <laughs> why are you why are you saying still broke? You were never broke. Stop pretending like you were. A, a broke character before like you're trying to make up for all that inaccuracy that was homecoming and far from home and number two what you isaiah said you're sitting in this very rich place with sark Kinda. weapons and yeah this compound and like you're not broke really do you, you just... really think that before they were forget who he is that that he couldn't have got a job at stark industries in this universe <laughs> like <laughs> That Pepper Pot is like Pepper Screw this kid that definitely needs help. happy. None of them could have gotten him a job at Stark or in skip exactly. to school. Like I mean, they were like they were pretending like he had a chance at college, and they were like drawing this bit out. And while watching the movie, it, it's like I was. It was very clear to me that they weren't going to get to college, and definitely not Peter. So they were really just kind of like creating this fake problem, same as with later on in the movie where, where these villains break out you could have sent them back and that would have been the most responsible thing to do but you made up this fake feeling of responsibility that aunt may said therefore we have to believe in the her what she says even though she was a useless character before now she works at feast so now we have to treat her as a saint so now you're gonna say that that is responsible even though it isn't but because we said it you have to believe us so it creates these fake problems and it tries to paint them as a heroic thing to do where he has to still do the right thing. But you did the wrong thing. You're not willing to admit you did something wrong. You're going to pretend that it's good. And that is this Spider-Man in, in a nutshell. So that's how we ended up getting this poor Spider-Man at the very end. And that is how you earned your way here. I have no faith in these writers. I think they just took something from Spider-Man PS4 that they saw. And they just copy and pasted that until until the end because they figured that was going to be what was going to satisfy the audience. Did you guys it also uh, did you guys also I notice the yeah. one the one kind of line that it kind of bothered me about MJ that they gave her they called her Michelle Jones Watson or something <sighs> like that? And I was like, no. I was like, she was fake MJ, you know, they're still trying to make her Mary Jane. And it's like she's not Mary Jane. Stop doing it. Yeah. Stop. You already called her MJ when she should be MJ. And it's like, like a lot of it would bo wouldn't bother me if she wasn't MJ. She was just some random new character. But no, they had to try to keep trying to make her Mary Jane. That bothered me. Yeah. The Before one thing I will leave. give this film, um, yeah, is when Peter's spirit. I keep going to say soul. Um, spirit is pushed out of his body by Strange. And when his body is dodging all of Stranger's grabs, the you can see ships. on Peter's. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's there. The what? You, what could you see? Uh, you can see the spider sense symbols from the comics and games around Peter's head. They were transparent, but you could see them. Except, when... I'm not sure if that's how the spider sense worked. It was like very fast, and it was like. Well, like that was his, that was, was portraying his spider sense. Um, that. I feel like there were some moments that, that showed that Spider-Man is a powerful character. Like, they don't always show that. Or they mentioned, I think it was Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, that mentioned that they they held back sometimes. And he stopped pulling punches back. He mentioned something like that. So, like, Spider-Man's a really powerful character, but they don't always portray that in the movies. How strong Spider-Man is. And all the yeah, kind of abilities he has. Being able to defy... Sorcerer Supreme with his body sense and it's just his hand wobbling back and forth. I thought I thought that was like this very weird visual that kind of took me out of the movie at that moment. Well, not just that scene that took me out of the movie. There were plenty, but you know that was one of them. Definitely, I didn't like how he was portrayed necessarily because kind of pulled me out of the movie. I thought it was a, a neat scene, kind of referencing because like I feel like they haven't. They keep joking about the spider sense, you know, calling this Peter Tingle. 
Uh, and stuff. It's like they keep like double. Like, it is it one joke they made. Sure, you know you can have the one joke Ant Man made or whatever, but they keep doubling down on that joke. And it's like, come on, I he's he's called it a spider sense. He knows it's a spider sense. It's like in the comics. It's like stop joking around about it. Like it's his power. Like come on. It feels like if um Bruce Banner was referring because oh my. Big green buddy. Yeah. So Isaiah, what did what didn't because I think you for the most part didn't like the movie, right? So what didn't you or like what is your general thoughts about the movie? Because or like what do you, you think about like I why do you not like it? All, I hate out of all places we went to the Statue of Liberty instead of somewhere in New York City. Like, I know. I know Statue of Liberty is on New York City, but like I wanted somewhere like how he's swimming in the end. I'm like, this is what I wanted. Give me something here where he's fighting all the villains in the city. The fuck? Um, because I've seen him in Europe. I've seen him in space. So where the fuck? Yeah, they don't like Spider-Man in New York in this. I mean, he's... I think the Statue of Liberty was fine. <laughs> I didn't think about it like that. I thought it was oh, the most yeah, it was fine, but New like, York centric yeah. movie that we've gotten. I think this is the closest we've gotten, really. Do you guys have any thoughts on the Captain America <sighs> Shield stuff? No. No. I literally don't. I that was like, random. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was random as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else did I like? Um,. Uh, uh, Doc Ock really um, peeved me. Didn't like how he was badass for a minute. And then, and then he's, as soon as you and then he's a joke, Stark yeah. tech, he's a joke. And then he doesn't do anything to help Peter when he's cured. He pieces out, then he shows up <laughs> yeah. and he does something for a second. And then the That's movie's the over. I was like... He was... And when he if is possessed... Like Doc Ock for a what? If we could have seen Doc Ock versus a lizard or something, like him help. Yeah. yeah. Instead, we get some salt water, fresh water. Do you want to drink one of those scenes? Well, that seems like something the MCU would write. Well, and by the way, there was a lot of that MCU humor plaguing the, this movie, uh, which, you know, like obviously was going to happen, but you, you could see it with like Toby and Andrew themselves and it just kind of came off as a wooden to me a lot of that typical hey if we say something in this very slow manner uh, it's going to be funny and if we maybe even repeat it it's going to be funny right guys here's well, a reference we're going to say let me ask to, you guys a question, punchline. Uh, since you didn't like it was there any part with Andrew and Toby that you did like any aspect of them or what they did or anything yeah was there? Um, it was just pure fan service, and then, um, but like I did enjoy Toby and Andrew just talking in the construction area. I like the back cracking thing. Yeah, the back cracking. I know it was like random, but like, yeah, yeah I, I, it's, I had to pick humor. one thing to enjoy. I would enjoy it. That. Are you? I liked. I liked their uh, interaction. The about, is that the only place where webs come out of? Like, is I? I think that's a legitimate question in that situation where this guy just yeah. shoots webs out of his arms. <laughs> yeah, and I like their. I'm surprised that they didn't destroy those characters. So I think that is that was uh that was nice to see. Although that's a very low bar to have to to see that they didn't destroy them. I you think know, that's very low. That's a low bar, uh, but it was nice just to see the characters be there, wouldn't... even though I think they kind of like screwed screwed it up because that was like your one moment in history of cinema to actually have these characters on screen. And the way you introduce them is by having Ned whirl his arms around and suddenly he knows how to use magic and that is how you're going to introduce them. Yeah, that pissed me off. I did even I did, more slander for Doctor Strange. Well, there's one point I, I want to touch on that Doc said or Isaiah said that he said fan service, which I think it is fan service. 
Uh, then that's a lot of people. I think people mentioned that about in game there was too much fan service or something. You know, like Cap picking up Milner and mm -hmm. different things. Yeah. But I personally don't see a problem always with fan service, especially when most of the time they go out of their way to not service the fans. I know that sometimes you yeah. shouldn't like you shouldn't sacrifice the story for fan service necessarily, but putting in fan service things or making a movie that is fan service, if that's what you're trying to do, is wrong. I think that's good, especially with what they usually do. Now I know it's just like a one off thing. I'm not saying they're gonna keep doing that, but like having that I think is a good thing actually. Yeah, I think... there's nothing wrong with having like the callbacks, but when like um there's not that's much all you have. well for me, there's not much good in the film and then like the only reason I keep seeing people saying they like it is these little moments yeah. and the rest of it is just like weightless and just stupid. It's it is annoying to just go, oh yeah, I like this one moment with the fan service because, like, of course you're gonna like it when everything else is shit, and that's fan service. I yeah, it's like, but the fan know, yeah, fan service alone is not bad to have, I guess. Yeah, and I don't think anyone is saying that it is bad, and I think with Avengers Endgame, it was done better than it was done here. Uh, obviously, it had its bad moments in Avengers Endgame. But at least you could say some of it was like a direct payoff to what was happening in the story itself. Um, whereas in this movie, it's not a payoff to anything. They're just kind of there. And then they're just talking about how they did that one thing. It's They're not paying off much. The closest you got was uh, MJ uh, being saved by Andrew Garfield. But again, to me, that didn't really feel like anything because I've already seen him. Uh, be a hero and come back to that and to me it's just absurd how it was done just to kind of like a bait and switch of Tom Holland and now you get Andrew Garfield I think they should have even had uh, Tobey Maguire save her at the end just to be to make fun of how stupid that scene was how how long she was falling for a second just so we could have this fake uh, fan moment I think you could have had that mo had that moment if it was just Andrew that saved her if you just didn't have Tom Holland going for her uh because then it would have been maybe then it would have made sense, but they just wanted to have that bait and switch so that they could get the emotional reaction out of you. It's like you're focused on Tom Holland saving her that when Andrew suddenly comes to save her, you're like very into it because you didn't expect it to happen. And then it happens. And then, you know, it's an emotional reaction. That's what this entire movie is just an emotional reaction. But if it was Andrew saving her right away, it would have the emotional reaction wouldn't have been the same because there's no sh shock factor. Just like they stab Peter at the end, Toby Maguire, they stab him at the end. It's just the emotional reaction to have. It's like, oh no, are they gonna are they gonna kill him? And then you realize that they don't kill him. It was just a random stab that didn't really do anything to him. When you're talking about like story payoff, like say like an example in Avengers. Like, say, with Cat picking up Milner, are you talking about, like, say, like, an Ultron where they're, like, having the whole thing about them picking up the hammer and yeah, Thor yeah. thinking maybe he was worthy and different things, like, that kind of payoff, like, yeah. down the line? Yeah, that and also definitely that. But I think, like, with the Mjolnir stuff, I think it was just a little unbelievable how Cap was able to master Mjolnir with no I problem. I think that was, that was the problem. That was the problem. Uh, Captain America picking up the hammer wasn't the problem, but that part itself was. And I think the portals was well earned to me. It was like maybe, yeah, I think that was well earned within itself how they all come. And it made sense how Wong, you know, he kind of cuts out of Infinity War for no reason. And then, and then the reason why that was was because he was, well, because he knew what he trusted Doctor Strange. And so I assume that they would basically know both. They were in on what was happening. And although, then again, maybe I think he probably contacted Wong on... There was like five uh, years in between that, so probably. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. Uh, but yeah, I think even though, like, I think the portals themselves themselves made sense. And every, most of the things that they were trying to do... Um, we're somewhat in service of like servicing the story with some of the moments being just outright fan service, like 
when Tony Stark picks up the gauntlet and like randomly out of nowhere he has all these infinity stones in himself randomly that part was like oh you're just gonna do that to kill him off and you you didn't really do much and like the entire fight being just a bunch of punching bags yeah okay that was a bit questionable but at least there was some there was some uh climax to it all it it, it also helped that it was like a story being told and Avengers Endgame was literally the end game of it all. And in that sense, yeah, I like, I think it was, you could say it's a payoff. Whereas in this movie, it's just random references. They're throwing stuff at you and you're just supposed to clap at it. It doesn't matter if it's Ned using magic out of nowhere, which Doctor Strange had to practice day and night over. And he almost died trying to master the teleportation spell. But I guess Ned just does it because he moves his arms around and we're supposed to laugh at it. But then, oh, look, Andrew Garfield comes out of nowhere and then it's Toby. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I mm. saw the plot <laughs> problems you have with it and the problems I see that. I just, I split things. Like, I don't usually look at movies critically at all. I just, did <laughs> I like it or do I not like it? And, I think, and I think for as far as critical com- and have that perspective. I mean, that's just I, usually if- how it is with me. And then for comic book movies, my critical is usually comic. Like, I know what happens in the comics. Does it follow that? And I guess I'm not expecting them to follow the comics in this, which sucks that we're at that point. So, but that's usually what pull what I notice more than like say story. You know, bad story. You know. Yeah. plot things like that's what i notice at least in superhero yeah. movies but i looked at it too Fair from enough. a do i like it do i not like a it? perspective it's just i also like to criticize it for what it is so yeah. i like so i like it because critically it did these things right whereas i didn't like it because these things kept popping out on the screen and they kept grinding my gears because i was just being annoyed by this stuff so like, I, too, look at whether I like this stuff or not. And with Spider-Man No Way Home, it's not that I like this movie. And then from a critical point of view, I think it's a bad movie. No, I didn't like this movie because it was poorly executed. Mm. And, and because it was annoying me every time I watched it. I facepalmed at one moment in the movie. And it was when they did the... I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. I couldn't believe they were doing that because mm. it was like such a random thing. It's like, oh, he said the meme thing. I guess that's supposed to be funny. Where it, it doesn't really pay any service to... It's like, I couldn't believe they did that in the movie. There was something, I don't remember what it was, that I that I almost did that, a facepalm kind of moment. Somewhere in the beginning. Uh, when the they movie. made fun of Doc Ock? Well, I mean, that, that I knew that was coming because that was when I facepalm watching the trailer that they said that. <laughs> but, I mean, there was something for what it was. It was a, a very big thing. Miles like, Morales oh part? Well, I mean, that was, like, that was, like, not even... Like, that was little for what I was expecting them to do. Something like that. I mean, okay. I don't think it was necessary, but... You know they're going to bring him in some point, somewhere. <clears throat> well... Isaiah, uh, you were talking yeah. earlier about uh, the, with the like the the stuff with like Doc Hawk and how like um. Oh uh, yeah, the inconsistency with um, bef- um before when Doc Hawk was the first villain captured, he said he mentioned um Peter mentions yeah there was this green elf on the bridge and he's like yeah that was the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn died by his own glider, and I instantly thought oh so. They've just completely forgot that no one knows except for Peter and then the butler. And then Harry finds out at the end of Spider-Man 2 after Doc dies. Wait, and but then doesn't, he doesn't find that he's stabbed by his glider until the butler finds out. Doesn't Doc Ock um, talk to Harry no. about it, though, in the Spider-Man 2? No. No, or does he? Because, um, no, because Norman's last words to Peter are, don't tell Harry, like, so no one can know. And when and he delivers Norman's um, body back to um, um, their house. He's just naked in a sheet. So well, no so one like knows. Nobody knows. I just thought except that... for the but... okay. Well, I mean, they he so probably just just thinks... Harry just thinks Spider-Man killed him. He doesn't know how. 
Yeah, so like nobody should know who Goblin is, which is why it makes no it makes no sense why Doc knows who he is, because mm-hmm. then that would get rid of Harry's development in Spider Man. Yeah, I can see. And also, but that's how the only real work? big law consistency thing. Ah uh, no, I would I wouldn't say so because it's like well I can think you send of... them back and what you send them back to that moment. And then, by the way, we've got a confirmation on this because I had like a lot of people who disagreed with me with me on this because I called Andrew Garfield in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 a murderer because he killed Elektra at the end of that movie and people were arguing with me, no, he's energy and stuff. And I'm set. And I told them, no, it's pretty made very clear that Gwen and Peter killed Elektra in that movie. And they were arguing with me that, no, no, it, it's an energy. And then in this movie, they pretty much confirmed that Electro is murdered by the end of that movie. He's like, oh crap, I was going to die. Uh, so that's yeah. confirmed. But then what? You're sent back to that moment. Jamie Foxx is sent back to that moment and he still dies because he's electrocuted to death if he's inserted back into that situation. Same thing with mm. Dr. Octopus. He goes back, he still has to save his, or he has to break down that thing and he still drowns. So I suppose it just depends. I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's. Ex- I don't know if that's explained. I don't. Yeah. And with Sandman, you actually made things worse for him, because before he used his powers to like run away from the cops, and he could see his daughter maybe that way. Now he has no powers to run away from the cops, so he's gonna be pre- prosecuted. He's gonna be in the prison for the rest of his life, and he's never going to he- see his and daughter ever lizard. again. And the lizard, like well, the lizard, well, kind of. Probably off- he kind of like helped Peter at the end and he wasn't still on the let's change everyone to lizards thing. Like he wasn't yeah. like that. So I was kind of, he seemed back on that in the movie too. He seemed, com- why was he, why was he being like, it's like confusing where, when the lizard was being pulled from. Uh, yeah, it was confusing. Cause he is in jail as far as um, I know. I think there was some kind of post credit scene. He's in jail. Yeah. So He's not dead. He was oh, him and Sandman were were not dead in their movies. So, well, guys, as you see, we're not all uh at the same thinking, but that was where our thoughts on Spider Man No Way Home. Let us know what you guys thought of the movie. Did you like it? Did you agree with the other guys? Did you not like it? Uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.